While its predecessors N-250 was a state-of-the-art aircraft at the time, the N-209 was designed to fit its purpose, to serve remote areas and connect the vast archipelago as mandated by Indonesia's founding fathers. N-209 was developed in just five years with 400 million USD in total in spending in collaboration of PT Dirgantara Indonesia and Lapan. Could you collaborate more on the development of N-209 over the years? Okay, the, the development of N-209 is mainly funded by the government. Yeah? Through RISTEC and through Lapan and through our con company itself, yeah? through Ministry of State-Owned Enterprise. The amount is not much, actually. It's actually less than $100 million. Yeah? Less than $100 million, but it consists from two sources, from the Ministry of uh, State-Owned Enterprise, which is actually where our, our company reported to, and from uh, Ministry of Re Research Sectory through LAPAN. Yeah? Why we can do it with such a low cost? Yeah? Because in the, in, in the original world, then, is uh, in the Western world or in the outside of Indonesia, that will be very, very, very small money. The, the main thing is because we don't need to invest in the facility. Yeah? We don't need to invest on the engineer, on the training on the engineer, yeah, and so on. Because as you know, the hangar is here, the engineer is here, the facility there, the machinery, and so on. So we don't need to, to invest on, on this. We've been utilizing it to develop a new aircraft. Yeah. There's, basically the story behind the development cost. Although the company has recorded many achievements, N-209 is considered the East first giant leap since the development of the N-250 by PT Industri Pesawat Terbang Nusantara or IPTN, the East former name. How PT DE combines the ergonomy and the newest technology to answer the demand of the aircraft market with the newest technology but still with competitive price? Okay, let me explain. Yeah, in our world, in the aircraft uh, design and, and manufacturing or development, when we use technology, we do not use technology for the sake of the newest technology. If we use uh, newer technology, it got to be for the merit of it. It's actually useful for the product. Yeah. So uh, let me explain uh, the the reason. N219 is an uh, aircraft that will be used in the remote region. Just imagine that it be, uh, be land and take off from an uh, area with probably uh, very minimum uh, air traffic controller support, very minimum ground support, yeah? even maybe land in the, in the, in the airstrip where no airport. Yeah? And then you have to... So when we design the aircraft, we have to consider all these conditions. Yeah? For example, uh, the aircraft uh, have a, a technology that it could, for example, uh, can be move around in the in the uh, in the small area. It can land in the grass strip, yeah, and it can land in the in the in the short trip. But then, if need to be inspected, the all the all the component um, will be easily inspectable, yeah? So, are you confident that N219 can compete with the foreign produced airplanes in Indonesia or even in Southeast Asia? We are very confident, like, like I explained uh, before, because this aircraft was carefully designed to fulfill the Indonesian need for this kind of aircraft. Thank you, Pandi, for joining us today. Good afternoon, nice to meet you. Okay, thank you for the interview too. Pleased to meet you.